Ezekiel continues to announce that judgment is coming for the surrounding Gentile nations, Pharaoh and Egypt this time, fulfilling his role as a watchman, dispensing his duty and delivering his soul. And Peter encourages us to persevere faithfully through suffering. Today on 3 and 1, as we consider Ezekiel chapters 31 through 33 and 1 Peter chapter 4. Well, today the pulpit is in North Dakota near the Continental Divide overlooking some cliffs uh, in the freezing cold. <laughs> I wish you could see it, and in fact you can see it if you find me on Facebook or on Instagram. Uh, I'm Dominic Dinger on Facebook and Dominic Dinger on Instagram as well. Follow us there and use it as a way to tell your friends about 3 and one well, today we were in Ezekiel and we were also in 1 Peter 4. And you'll have to forgive me if I sound a little frozen and that's because <laughs> I am. <laughs> uh, in Ezekiel today, uh, there was a point where I was struck at how difficult all of this must have been for the prophet. It was when I learned that he had a wife. See, it would be one thing to be single and be a crazy prophet. A, a crazy prophet that lays on his side for 390 days cooking his food over cow dung because God told you to, announcing judgment for Judah, announcing judgment for Gentile nations. But imagine what that would be like for his wife, for his family. And yet, that was his duty. That was made very clear today. Although unpopular, although agitating to sinful and selfish men, Ezekiel was appointed by God to be a watchman. And as a watchman, if instead he chose to appease man and avoid the wrath of man, he would be in way more trouble with God. God said, Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the people of Israel. So hear the word I speak and give them warning from me. When I say to the wicked, you wicked person, you will surely die. And you do not speak out to dissuade him from his ways. That wicked person will die for their sin, and I will hold you accountable for their blood. But if you do warn the wicked person to turn from their ways, and they do not do so, they will die for their sin, though you yourself will be saved. You know, all of this sounds sort of like when the Apostle Paul said, Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. I did not choose to be an apostle. I was called by God. I'm only dispensing my duty, this difficult duty, but it's duty nonetheless. And obviously that's paraphrased by me, of course, but you get the point. Ezekiel was appointed to be a watchman. Paul was appointed to be an apostle. It was difficult duty, but it was duty nonetheless. The alternative of disobeying God was not an option for Ezekiel, nor for the apostle Paul. The only option was throwing yourself into this worthy work, this excellent difficulty. And that's how I feel about ministry. See, we have been called to something similar. Like Ezekiel, you and I as believers are charged with the responsibility to announce the rapidly approaching second coming of Jesus Christ, where he will judge the Jew first and then the Gentile. But then, like the Apostle Paul, we are also to announce the good news, the escape from judgment, that you don't have to die, that God doesn't want you to die, God wants to give you a gift that will get you through the judgment, the gift of righteousness by faith because of the full payment for our sins by Jesus Christ for the Jew first and then for the Gentile. Paul said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew and then to the Gentile. For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. So we are watchmen as Christians. We are to announce the inevitable soon coming judgment of Jesus. And we are also apostles in a sense, in a sense that we have been sent to say that God doesn't want you to die. He's provided a way for you to be saved, to turn from your sin and receive the free gift of everlasting life. And guys, that's been God's heart all along in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, that those who have been weighted down by their sin would turn and confess and forsake their sin, turning to God, turning away from sin and death and turning towards the Lord in order to live. 
And that's what we read today in the Old Testament, in verses 10 and 11 of chapter 33, where God says, Son of man, say to the Israelites, this is what you are saying, our offenses and sins weigh us down and we are wasting away because of them. How then can we live? Say to them, as surely as I live, declares the Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked but rather that they turn from their ways and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways. Why will you die, O people of Israel? See, that's God's heart in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. The New Testament equivalent of what we just read would be Jesus saying, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So, follower of Jesus, this is our duty to announce the inevitable coming judgment for all men and also to announce the available salvation for all men. We are watchmen sent to say that there is a way Jesus is coming soon to bring judgment to those who have rejected him, but he's also coming soon to bring salvation to those who have received him, to those who are eagerly awaiting his second coming. Okay, on to our New Testament reading for today in 1 Peter chapter 4, before I am completely frozen. Where... <laughs> 1 Peter chapter 4, where the Apostle Peter encouraged believers to continue to persevere in the midst of suffering. And the chapter began this way. Therefore, since Christ suffered in his body, arm yourself with the same attitude, because whoever suffers in the body is done with sin. As a result, they don't live the rest of their earthly lives for evil human desires, but rather for the will of God. Now, this New Testament passage stands in stark contrast to the way that our Old Testament reading ended today, when God said in Ezekiel, so they come as though they are sincere and they sit before you as a prophet listening, but they have no intention of actually doing what I tell them to do. They talk very sweetly about loving the Lord, but with their hearts, they are just loving their money. And yes, we're recording this on Black Friday. That's what day it is. And what an indictment, huh? That passage was from the end of our Old Testament reading, like we said in Ezekiel. It's Ezekiel 33, verse 31. Listen to it again. So they come to you as though they are sincere, and they sit before you listening, but they have no intention of actually doing what I tell them to do. They talk very sweetly about loving the Lord, but with their hearts, they're just loving their money. This, this is the opposite attitude from the one that the Apostle Peter was advocating in 1 Peter 4, where he said, Therefore, since Christ suffered in his body, arm yourself also with the same attitude, because whoever suffers in the body is done with sin. As a result, they don't live the rest of their earthly lives for hu evil human desires, but rather for the will of God. And you know this if you've endured a season of significant suffering. It, it helps you to see what's truly important. Not the fleeting fancies of withering worthlessness of all that this world has to offer, but rather true life and true peace and true value. It's only found in living for the will of God. Solomon himself came to the same conclusion when he said at the end of Ecclesiastes, here's my final conclusion. Fear God and obey his commandments. For this is the entire duty of man. For God will judge us for everything that we do, including every hidden thing, whether good or bad. So, watchmen sent by God to announce the inevitable judgment and the available way of salvation for all men and for all women. Are you going to be like those at the end of our reading in Ezekiel who were fine with listening but had no actual intention of doing what God said to do? Or are you going to be those who arm themselves with the attitude of Christ, seeing his suffering and choosing to be done with sin, choosing to live the rest of their lives not for the withering worthlessness of the world, but rather for the will of the one who willingly suffered to save them? <laughs>